Charleston celebrates its 350th anniversary this year, and to commemorate that, Charleston Pirate Tours brings you Charleston History Highlights. Hi, Eric with Charleston Pirate Tours. We left Blackbeard sailing home with 40 guys, but what happened when he got home? He was welcomed back into town like a hero, given a pardon from the governor, divvied up the slaves and all the goodies, and he made a handsome fortune for himself. So now, he wants to go out on an adventure. You see, at one point in Blackbeard's early days, when he was still just known as Edward, his father had actually taken him to Philadelphia, where he was indentured to the captain of a merchant ship in his late teens, and that's how he learned the skills of a seaman. And he had friends up there, so he wanted to go see them. So he heads up to uh, Philadelphia to hang out with some of his friends. His favorite watering hole up there was the Blue Anchor. That is considered to be probably the most popular tavern in the area at the time. We also believe he had a little Swedish blonde girlfriend up there as well. The crew was on the ship and Blackbeard had slipped into town and paid a few guys to kind of watch out for him. So while he was sitting in the tavern, he was interested in hearing the stories going around and actually some of the men were actually talking about some of his past escapades. And while he was there, a man came in and said, Sir, you need to know there are men on their way down here with an arrest warrant for you. Word had reached the governor that Blackbeard was in town. He had heard of his pardon in North Carolina and frankly wasn't impressed. We have 12 independent colonies and he said, I care not what this man has in North Carolina. It is not worth the paper it's written on. And I haven't forgotten what he did out in the Delaware Cape. And he was going to have him arrested with his crew. Blackbeard slipped out the back door, made it out to the ship, and said, we got to get out of here. So now they head back out, wondering what are we going to do. Somebody suggested they should go down to St. Thomas and become a privateer vessel. But the ship was in bad shape. So the men decided at that point, we're going to over to Bermuda. Somewhere between here and Bermuda, we're bound to find us a ship that we can take and bring back to North Carolina to get our ship seaworthy to go down there because right now it won't go in the shape it's in. Blackbeard at this point was outvoted by his crew. He was a lone person on that vessel that voted against doing this because he said, gentlemen, if we're caught, this pardon we do have in North Carolina will be worthless. But he was outvoted by the crew. So they head toward Bermuda came across two French vessels under sail, and they ended up capturing these two vessels. One happened to be filled with lumber, rigging, sails, mast, and an extra, um, extra um, uh, material that they needed to repair the ship. The other ship was loaded with the haul of cocoa and sugar from Martinique. So they made them load all the sugar and cocoa onto the ship with the lumber. Blackbeard released all these Frenchmen and brought that vessel back to North Carolina. They go around to the lee side of the island in a little cove off Springer's Point to do this work. Now Blackbeard knows if he gets caught, he's in trouble. So he made a quick run to Bath to see his old friend Tobias Knight. And on the 14th of September in 1718, he was at Tobias Knight's house at midnight. Knight insisted that he go back to his ship and said, all you need to do is come back 10 days from now and we'll go to the governor and tell him you found this ship half sunk outside of the mouth of the inlet and you want a salvage hearing. So 10 days later, he's at the governor's house. He calls Knight and says, we need to have a salvage hearing for our friend. Apparently he's found the scuttled ship half sunk in the inlet. So they come to town and have the hearing. Well, as part of the agreement for the salvage, he ends up giving most of the sugar and cocoa to the governor. Now, I don't think the governor's dumb enough to think that he actually had this ship that he found scuttled somewhere. But he went along with it. So everything looked good at this point. But there was a fly in the ointment. I'm Eric with Charleston Pirate Tours. Happy birthday, Charleston.